Woo, the gospel this morning is something. So let's set the scene. Jesus is in the temple, and the chief priest and the elders of the people and the Pharisees have been questioning him on the source of his authority for doing the things he's been doing. He parlays that question with some questions of his own. And then he goes into parable mode, Jesus' favorite way of teaching. The parable we hear this morning is the second of the two he tells. It's about a landowner who plants a vineyard, puts a fence around it, digs a wine press in it, and builds a watchtower. The landowner has invested a lot in this operation. He leases it to the tenants and he goes away to another country. When the harvest time comes, he sends his slaves to collect his produce. But the tenants seize the slaves and beat one, kill another, and stone another. The landowner sends more slaves, but they get the same treatment by the tenants. At this point, the landowner decides to send his son. One might question the landowner's wisdom in doing this, but in his thinking, the tenants will surely respect his son. Quite a generous assumption. Wise assumption? Not so much. The tenants see the son and they see an opportunity. Ah, this is the heir. Kill him and the inheritance is ours. So the tenants seize him, throw him out of the vineyard, and kill him. Now then, Jesus says, when the owner of the vineyard comes, what will he do to those tenants? And without missing a beat, the chief priest and Pharisees, the elders of the people, they said, he will put those wretches to a miserable death and lease the vineyard to other tenants who will give him the produce at harvest time. One can understand how one might arrive at that answer. My goodness, these tenants have killed the workers and the son. They are utterly wicked, evil, and so destructive. That landowner had to be shattered. That's enough to drive anyone to the breaking point. If we're honest, we might be able to understand that take them down, destroy them completely mindset. I mean, after all, didn't God kind of do the same thing with the whole flood thing back in Genesis? And in response to those put those wretches to a miserable death answer, Jesus pulls out this gem. Have you never read in the scriptures, the stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone? This was the Lord's doing, and it is amazing in our eyes. That's a rather puzzling metaphor. And Jesus continues, therefore, I tell you, the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to a people that produces the fruit of the kingdom. The one who falls on the stone will be broken to pieces and it will crush anyone on whom it falls. I'm not sure the chief priests and Pharisees quite know what to make of Jesus' parable and response, but they are intuitive enough to know that they've just been slammed. They realize that he's speaking about them and they want to arrest him. But they fear the crowd because the crowd understands that a prophet is in their midst. So let's pull out to the 20,000 foot level. What the leaders want is retribution. You have taken something precious from me, I'm gonna take something precious from you. You are evil, wicked, destructive, and you must be stopped in your tracks, and not just stopped, but I need to exact a little revenge along the way. This is the take no prisoners approach. It seems to me that a good bit of our society is operating on these rules just now. 
We see it played out in our governing leaders. We see it played out in all the groups pitted against one another. We divide ourselves into wicked tenants and benevolent landowners who turn wicked in return. The desire for retribution metastasizes, and it won't be content until it invades every part of our collective social body. It's understandable, but it's not gospel. Jesus offers a different way. The stone that's rejected, it becomes the cornerstone. We can't make that happen. It's the Lord's doing, and it's amazing. When suffering has been inflicted, pain unleashed, rejection has been writ large, it can feel like a bottomless pit of nothingness. But that undefended, vulnerable, exposed, powerless, surrendered place is actually unbelievably solid. And it's the very material that God resurrects and shapes into the cornerstone, the foundation of a whole new structure. And when you fall on that stone, it breaks you. It shatters you. It can even crush you but only in the service of breaking our desire for retribution, shattering our ego that would keep us apart, and releasing us from all that stands in the way of understanding that we are all kin and members of the same body. Putting those wretches to a miserable death is signing our own death sentence. And the illusion that we can just cut another off needs to be shattered if we are to live as the beloveds we are meant to be. And let's bring this down to the individual level. Think about those things that have shattered you, broken you, caused you pain and suffering those things that take you down to the bottom and won't let you up for air? What if instead of trying to exorcise those things, fight those things, cast those things out of your mind and out of your life, which, let's be honest, doesn't work anyway, what if instead we let ourselves be shattered? We surrendered to our brokenness, And we placed all our broken pieces in God's hands to let God shape us anew and hand us back to ourselves as a cornerstone, solid and strong and unshakable. Important caveat here. I am not saying that God visits suffering upon us or anyone else in order to shatter us. Collectively, we do that to one another. And individually, life will bring us plenty of shattering experiences all on its own. I am saying that given the suffering we human beings experience, given all the ways that life shatters us, with God's help, we can find release and find our way to resurrection and the freedom of a new life. We follow a Lord who gets this, who has lived this, who has died this, and who has risen into a whole new life and way of being, and who longs for us to know the freedom that comes through this journey. Retribution and payback They just won't get you there. These just aren't kingdom of God values. And only those who can surrender that desire to destroy the one or the thing which has destroyed you will know how to live 
and love and produce and enjoy the fruits of a kingdom whose reigning value is forgiveness. Accountability for the tenets and the, and the destructive forces throughout this world will be important. But that is not Jesus' concern today. Today he's making sure our hearts get clear first. I wish it weren't true, but it seems to be that only those who have tasted of the shattering will be strong enough and solid enough to bear the love that can break the hold of the never-ending cycle of revenge that has infected our world. And only those who have tasted of the shattering will be able to reveal the exquisite cost and beauty of being made new that can make even a wicked tenant take notice of this amazing thing that the Lord has done. So if you've been shattered, just know your life is hidden in Christ, crucified and risen. You are a cornerstone in the making. Far from being destroyed and cast away, you are being made new. Not in spite of the, suf of the shattering and the suffering, but because of it. Utterly transformed through it. You are a cornerstone in the making. This is the Lord's doing, and it is amazing in our eyes. There's just one question left. Can you see how beautiful and strong you've become?